Welcome to Carolina Sculpture Studio. My name is Clint Button. I'm a granite sculptor. Welcome to video number 40 of the virtual stone carving apprenticeship. It's time to start cutting this detail on this cross. We did the panels front and back, uh, got them pretty close, and now I'm going to work on the actual ornate detail for the ends of these ends of the bar, ends of the shaft, and the top of the shaft. Now, the way I'm going to do it is the way I think it needs to be done because it's the way that works well for me. Um, other people have different ideas on what they want to do. Um, I learned a long time ago, um, actually, while I was working in the kitchen, when you're doing multiples of something, you do the same step from start to finish on everything. And then you do the next step on everything from start to finish. Uh, on, on most projects, this will cut your production time because you will, uh, instead of performing a task from start to finish where you produce like for in, in this situation, where we would produce the entire end, all the detail. We'd cut the, we'd cut the raised portion here, or leave the raised portion, cut these uh, one, two, three, four, five, six facets, do all that on every one of these, and start and finish it. And then go to the next one and do all four corners and finish it. And then go to all four corners and finish it. You're welcome to do that. Well, let me explain a couple of reasons why I don't. Something that is a, a major concern is, is if you have a failure. If you have a small chip, I'm not talking about catastrophic where you're acting stupid and you break something that shouldn't be broken in the first place. Saying when you have something that maybe you have a corner that's not real sound and it comes off. Maybe you've got a piece of marble, like that dormant capital I mentioned, that apparently was pushed hard on one side with a saw and one face was really punky. It was really soft in for about a quarter inch. Now, I couldn't waste off that material. I had to use it. And so, because I had done all my different sides progressively, I didn't do one side and finish it, one side and finish it, I understood that that was a fragile side. And so that was probably going to dictate how the rest of the stone turned out because if I was going to have anything where I'd lose a corner or lose an edge, it was probably going to happen on that face where that where the stone was soft because every edge and every corner I cut that was tangent to that face was uh, was really risky, and so I progressively lowered everything down and I prioritized that soft side because that soft side would be the first one I cut because theoretically the other sides would be more sound. I don't know that I've got issues like that with this stone, but if I cut each level of detail to completion at the same time globally and approach the whole thing globally, it's not only going to help me produce work that's less likely to have failures where I've got to go back. The problem with finishing one thing all the way and finishing one thing all the way and finishing the last one all the way is that last one on that third or fourth corner, it's going to, something's going to break. I mean, that's just Murphy's Law or, or whatever you want to call it. So you're better off to slowly work them all in so that if you do have a small failure at one step, you can adjust the other so everything matches. Now, the goal is to have no failures. The goal is to always have perfect stone that's always in perfect dimensions. But this is natural stone, especially marble. It can have inclusions. You don't know if you're going to hit into a big shell or some color or another mineral. It's, it's different than granite that tends to be a little more clear just because of how it was made. This was all needed by heat and pressure. So it could have just about anything inside there, you know, within reason. So... We'll dissect this here, this model, and we're going to uh, start with the end and we'll do one step at a time. I'm going to jump ahead and tell you the first step on this is not necessarily obvious and it comes from, from my experience. Um, and so what we're going to do first, 
Early on, I mentioned that these ends, if they were left without this, this check or this V cut into them, they'd be octagons. And that doesn't make sense in terms of a cross. It makes more sense to have a cross on the end. So what we're going to do first is we're going to cut these ends into octagons. And that's going to establish these corners, the outboard corners, edges. We'll get those all evened up so all, all of them are the same. We'll cut it in half an inch. I believe that's a half inch measurement. I'll measure this again. It may just be an inch. I think it's a half inch. We're going to cut into where this intersection is right here where everything crosses and we're gonna cut straight across. Then we're gonna have a reference for these two edges, these two facets, and we're also gonna have a reference to where this goes from being reduced or relieved to being proud. And we've gotta have all that meat, and so we wanna have a really nice intersection and work that off carefully and get all of these even first. Because when you have things like this that are even, people are going to notice what's uneven. And so you want to make them all match and then go to the next step and make them all match. And so even if something is a little different than the model out of necessity, um, that's still worth inspect because they all match, nobody's going to notice it. Start cutting stone. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to get these ends really nice and square. They've got a little bit of tip and skew to them because we're going to waste off you know, two thirds of this face. So the center only has to be true. We're gonna make sure it's really true. We're gonna work it in the length we need it to be before we lay out our octagon and break this all up. So it's important to have your center line marked. We're gonna go ahead and remark this. Uh, you also ought to think about the order in which you cut it and as to what you're gonna see. This is a small project. It's gonna be mounted below eye level. So the vantage point is gonna be from above. If one of these end details needs to be perfect, like spot on perfect, it's going to be the top because that's what people are going to see. So you ought to start out working on the underside where nobody's ever going to crawl on the ground, lay on the ground, not literally have to lay on the ground and look up at it to see if you cut that one perfect. Think about those things because if you start right at the top and that's cockeyed, it's not going to look good. So go back on and rework all your lines just to make sure they're perfect. And then we'll start tuning this all up. With these lines marked, we've got our center point marked on each one of these. We're going to go ahead and measure our flat surface that's going to be in the center. We're going to measure it from one of these lines going to use a number inside the ruler, not the very end, to try to get a more accurate dimension. And we're going to lay out our marks so we've got a one inch dimension for that face. And then after that we can go ahead and mark our diagonals. And that's what we have all laid out. This is an inch wide and this is an inch wide. We're going to cut these corners off here so we've got a, we'll produce an octagon. We're going to just waste this side in and relieve it as we go in. Relieve this as we go in and just slowly work it in because we've only got to go in, I forget, it's like an inch and a half, something like that, whatever the model is. We'll get the model over here, but I'm going to just start cutting this. We'll work this in and we'll get these ends trued up really well. Because this is still just a little bit tall, see there's a little extra material there, and there's even less on this side. But that little extra material gives us room to dress this and have a really fantastic edge. So when we cut this edge up here, this one in here, as we sink this, we're going to leave about that same amount so we can get it down really, really tight when we start using our braces to wrap it up at the end. Now it's time to cut some stone. Small machine, smooth chisel. According to the model, 
this initial cut is going to go a half inch deep. So go ahead and mark it on here. An easy way to keep track of how deep I need to go is to go ahead and bevel this down to that line. Then I don't have to worry about looking at the line. I've got a, I got the stone cut where I need to go. And I can just reduce this and leave this top that half inch. See how this is beveled here? Now I'm just going to smooth this off. I'll probably work this in the rest of the way with a, with a smaller hammer. It's just not worth rushing it because these corners are fragile. Now we're going to waste off this corner. We're going to cut that right off, but there's no reason to just break it. You need to practice keeping track of your corners and taking care of them. Try to produce that as rehearsal. We're on the bottom side of one of the bars. Okay, this is where you want to practice because you don't want to screw this up because we're going to have to produce square corners like this after we do this carved detail. Okay, keep working. Now that's all pushed down. And you can brick it if you want just to make sure you get it pretty flat. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do this. Same side over here. Then we can level use this plane that's pretty flat. We can cut this back and make sure that this stays flat because when we cut this back to make the octagon on the end first, the only point that we're going to save is the center of this corner right here in the middle. That's what we're trying to produce and we're going to leave it. This is also a good chance to practice developing a corner. Instead of cutting it, you can reduce it and leave it in place. And I'm going to cut this and I'm going to flip it. I'm going to go ahead and do all these first. So. We'll be back in a little bit to show you the rest of this. We're going to cut all the rest of these. All these are relieved. I'm going to go ahead and mock this corner off. Now I don't have to go crazy getting this whole panel down to half an inch. I'll get it fairly close, but the only thing that really matters is this interior edge. So these are all about a sixteenth of an inch high. I'm going to go ahead and cut these corners off before I turn it. I've got the two sides done and I'm doing the top. I'm just going to do the top before I turn it. I'm going to push them down and then get them all exactly half inch and that will give me my even perimeter because I can use this as a plane to measure all the way around and make sure that they're 
equal. And it just, you don't have to do it this way, but things will come out even. Seems like a long way to get there, but once all of a sudden it's done, they just blam, it's finished, and it's really cool. So, cut these corners off. You gotta remember, what we're cutting now for corners are gonna be right at finished edges, so we gotta be really careful. These corners are gonna start to matter, because if they crumble, it'll interfere with that face. We're gonna have to produce a sharp corner on both of these. There you go. I got these back. I'll push this back. This still looks a little wonky because these aren't perfectly plumb. I'll work them all in because it's real easy to get them perfectly square. And then you dig them and you gotta take the whole face back. So I'll work this back carefully. But now I'm gonna go ahead, knock the other corners off like this, get them to a half inch. And then we gotta push back here another half inch to go down. And then we'll tip from there to that one to make another face. Um, so we just have to decide when we're going to start carving. We can either do that next, or we can go ahead and break this. And then I, I'm leery of having these corners popping around while we're working. So I'll probably push it back a little more before I do that. And then we got most of the carving put together, and we can be more careful because these corners are going to be really fragile. We're going to have to be really careful. Do the next side. Now all four, or all three pieces are all three ends. One here, one on the end here, and the one on the bottom. They're all cut, got them all pushed back. Went ahead, this is all leveled out. So we've got a good plane to work with here to measure before we go to the next step. Now we're at a sort of a turning point. We can continue to produce steps, but at some point you have to start carving, so you have to decide where you're going to start working on the job. And as we progress to the next level, I'm going to go ahead and cut these diagonals in order to produce the cross detail on the end. Now what I'm going to do, take my straight edge, I'm going to lay it on there on those two points. Draw a line, draw a line, right through. Then I'm going to push it down. Once I have a line on here, I'll sink it. I'll try to transfer it to get a, get a point here in the middle. I'm going to lower it to that. This is what we're trying to produce. This face, or this facet, will sink, and this facet will sink. We're going to get them very close. Probably not going to finish them because I want to finish everything together. We're going to do all four of these. We'll turn it, do the other four, and do the other four. And we'll get them very close, and then at the end I can just tune them up with some abrasive and get everything really where I want it. But uh, I could go ahead and produce the next step, because you've got to go back another half inch here. But this half inch, this line is going to be diagonal on top, so I'm going to wait. I'm going to produce this, and then we'll produce a square step here and leave this proud. Much like we did this, just sort of backwards. We'll end up cutting a line you know, roughly like that. We'll lower this whole face again after we've cut this and then we can tip that off and then we're we're close to where we need to be we'll have a lot of the dangerous work done so now the the, the dangerous part of the job is going to be covering making sure these corners aren't damaged while i'm turning the stone and uh so we'll try to make sure we work more with support on these surfaces that's why they're still here and uh we'll get to work see if we can get some good video of this Okay, I got one cut. I'm going to show you this next one. Now, I do have a line struck to try to keep track. Remember, we've got to keep these faces because we're going to produce, there's going to be a facet here and another facet here, and then we've got to tip this. So keep track of your, your model just so you don't get confused. It's really easy to get mixed up. 
going to use a small hand machine and a straight chisel. Just I will use a wide one and a narrow one. Put your claw away so you don't pick it up by mistake. That's fatal at this point. Go in slow. have to straighten this up a little bit when I move the camera because I'm bumping it and I'm not gonna play games but you can see that's how it's done this will produce this facet and this facet and half of this facet now when we push this part back we're gonna have to square this off like this to the regular dimension and then we'll do this in reverse right here we'll just cut we'll leave we'll do we'll we'll tip it back from top to here, and then we'll fasten it in each side. So this is why it works really well to work this back in planes and have good references because you'll once you give up your references, you're just gonna have to eyeball it and that's when things start getting all crooked and it looks like somebody says, see what I made? You want it to look like it's perfect because you're gonna keep control. Then at the very end, we'll go in and we'll get all these tuned up to where they're really, really sharp and get a little bit there because he's got a little bit of crown left in them. We'll pull all this down together so they all match. So, gonna start cutting the rest of these. Okay, I've got all three ends done. Now we got our cross, we got our first facets. I will suggest anybody that wants to do this project or something like this, do a small wood chip carving project. All you need is a knife with a, a straight cutting edge, not a curved edge. Um, a lot of times the chip carving knives, look them up online. They just, they'll be shaped with a straight edge and they'll just be a, like a sheep's foot blade. And this is the cutting edge. And you'd make a stab cut right here to cut it to depth. And then you'd cut in from here and from here in order to make your, your facets. And 
The reason I suggest doing it is it'll help you understand how to do it without going too deep because you'll dig too vertical here. Instead of going at an angle, you'll go in too much and then you'll have a, a problem with this, this face here. You won't have a straight line. And uh, it's real easy to do on some wood just to try it and see how it behaves. And then you'll be more prepared to do it. Okay, so we produced that end. Well, see if we get it. We produced that end. Now we've got to produce enough stone to produce the second half. We produced half of this facet right here. We've done this upper half up here. Now we got to cut this back to make this. We've already got this vertical, so we just have to decide whether we're going to. Um, we got to cut this back another half inch from here to here. So this has to go half inch deep, okay? But it has to go half inch deeper at a bevel because if it goes straight back, we're going to lose this material to create these facets up here. So I'm going to start pushing these back. I'll tip this back half an inch, measure down half an inch, and then I'll we'll facet this back just to make it go smooth and try to keep it work from this edge here we'll work back to create this this flat panel here and then after we've got a flat surface that just goes flat then we can cut the two sides off so like i said this isn't a, a this is somewhat complicated so you have to really slow down and think let's lay these next ones out so what i'm going to do This is all laid out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower this a half an inch. Mark just like before. We're gonna push this down half an inch and create a square corner here that's a half inch tall. We'll do that all four, all three of them, and all four, all three, all four corners on all three sides. And then after we get that done, then we've got a perfect piece that we can tip off and we can fasten it. And if you try to go ahead and cut two aspects of it at once, cut the depth and the tip at the same time, you're probably going to have a problem by the time you get done doing 12 of them. So let's push this back. We'll maintain control. We'll square up the ends on these, these faces here and uh, we'll go ahead and do it. And I'm going to do the top first because it's standing up. I know what I'm doing. So, you know, I've got to do it at some point. So instead of working on the underneath, I'm just going to start working. Now, if you did this with a saw, you could saw this in. I cut the last little bit of it with a chisel just to make sure that it stays nice and hard. You don't want to heat this up and soften these corners at all because you need all this for control. Okay, so let's sink this a half inch. We'll push this back just like we've been doing. We'll just do the same thing over and over again and it makes us good at it. Just more of the same. Mark my line, dip it to the line. I work the stone down to it. We've already done the back side. I'll push this in and keep this, try to get these squared up pretty well. Now I got to start working on pulling this and making it nice and square. Uh, well, something I am going to do as we turn this, sink this here, and then I have to do the same thing here and sink this. This is going to tend to get bigger and awkward and it could break off because if this is too heavy, to support the cross section because the cross section is going to be in here and it probably won't break yet. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to just waste this top off to balance these out. Down here, this is going to break, but that could break off. I don't want anything breaking. So while I've got this turned up, before I do it, I'm just going to take and push this all off. I can saw it off or, you know, whatever. But that'll help keep it from being as dangerous to break. And uh, we'll just keep cutting. these tops pushed off we'll go ahead and wrap this video up um, I think it's making good progress I hope it's clear for y'all to see what I'm doing and the order and why I'm doing it provide producing these different planes going down and working one level at a time really helps you maintain control 
And that's one of the biggest problems that people who aren't trained are just going to make it themselves. They start doing something, even if it's like the ground or the background on a bar relief, and they, they don't understand how to develop things in order. And they surrender reference points, and then everything gets all crooked. So um, we'll work on the next one and talk about some of the specific details and this will uh, start looking a lot different pretty soon. My name is Clint Button here at Carolina Sculpture Studio with the Virtual Stone Carving Apprenticeship. Thanks for coming in.